So thanks a lot, Matt, for inviting me. I'm, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about a subset of what Bruce talked about earlier. And this is the uh, age, diversity, uh, and origin of the California Floristic Province mix. So the outline, the way this talk is going to go, I'm going to give an overview of the mints first. Then I'm going to talk about the California mints. Then go into the origin of five specific clades of mints from the tribe Menthe and the family Lamiaceae. And then uh, talk about some ongoing work I had with Salvia, kind of in a broad sense. So first of all, Lamiaceae. It has about 7,000 species that occur worldwide. It has many uh, very familiar species, not only the smelly mints that I'm going to talk about mostly, but things like teak, um, lavender, which I guess is smelly, um, coleus, um, catnip. A lot of mints, a regular amount of time, a lot of things are in the mint family that uh, people know and maybe people don't know. So the mint family has 7,000 species. There are 235 genera, um, and they're broken up into seven different subfamilies. The largest of the subfamilies is the Nepetoideae, shown here in green. And that's going to be the, uh, that's about half of the species within the Lamiaceae, and that's been the focus, the primary focus of our mint research. The Neptoidea subfamily is further divided up into three um, tribes, um, the Menthe, the Osimiae, and the Ostrolciae. I should mention also that Neptoidea is de defined by, among other things, a feature called hexaculpate pollen. This means that the pollen has six apertures as opposed to three that are found in most eudicots. This feature is important because it um, is fairly easy identifiable in the uh, fossil record and it makes it uh, so it's a useful feature to date phylogenies because we can recognize that in the fossil record. So the Nepetoidea is divided into three tribes, and the largest of these is the Menthe uh, tribe. These uh, contain, the Menthe contains what I like to call the smelly mints or the minty mints, so Lepicinia, um, sage, oregano, thyme, catnip, monardella, um, bee balm, lemon balm, all those are in the mints. People, what people think of as mint, uh, most of those are in the mint. And that's about a third of the total number of species within the family. Okay, so mints in California, there are um, 19 native genera and about 120 native species within California. Uh, Raven and Axelrod, as part of their 1978 fit synthesis, hypothesized that many of these mints came from one of two sources. They either came um, through what's called Madrain, uh, with what's called Madrain affinity, meaning that the lineages the ancestors were southwestern United States, northwestern Mexico, or they had a north temperate uh, origin or ancestry. I'm going to focus on the clade or the, uh, the group of mints in California that are hypothesized to have a madrain affinity, and I'm also going to add in Lepchenia to that. Raven and Axelrod hypothesized that Lepchenia came to California via South America, but research that we've done has shown that Lepchenia is probably uh, has a Mexican origin as well. Okay, so the second part of this talk is going to go into the origin of these five California Forestry Province clades in, uh, in California. <coughs> so the California Forestry Province really doesn't need a whole lot of introduction in this group. However, I'll talk about it a little bit but anyway. Um, very high in endemism and species richness, um, great diversity in species number, habitat. It extends from southern Oregon down to the into northern Baja California, it includes most of California, but excludes the desert. So also rehashing a little bit of what Bruce was talking about, about 15 million years ago there was a pretty major shift in worldwide um, temperature and climate. And this also happened in California. So if we flash back to the California flora 15 million years ago, it would be much different, it would be much wetter. Um, there, was, there was more wetness in the summer. There were fossils from magnolia, persia, uh, sweet gum, hickory. A lot of species that are either confined in East, Eastern Asia now or Eastern North America or both, but are not, no longer present in California and are indicative of uh, summer rain. And there's a pretty sharp decline throughout the Miocene and then an even more precipitous decline and a lot of gyrations into the Pleistocene. And with this um, decline in temperature, it's believed that the present day California flora um, is, is, is Present-day Cal present California flora is a result of this uh, decline in temperature over the past 15 million years, more or less, and, the, uh, and some other factors as well, Mediterranean climate, orogeny, but um, anyway. 
So what I'm going to uh, look at here is this one part of Ra Raven and Axelrod's two-part hypothesis that the current California floristic province floor is largely derived from these Madrean lineages, and these Madrean lineages have their um, origin back into the Miocene. Specifically, I'm going to look at whether mints show this kind of pattern. So the genera I'm going to look at are Monodella, Canthamintha, Agogeny. I should say Monodella is about 40 species um, centered in the California floristic province, but there are some outliers as well. Canthamintha has four species. It's found solely in the California floristic province. Agogeny has eight species with a centered distribution in the California floristic province, but a um, few outliers outside of it. Salvia and Lepicinia um, are more widespread however. Salvia has about a thousand species total um, and with multiple centers of distribution worldwide with one um, kind of clade that occurs in the California forestry province of about 19 or 20 species. This, sub this salvia clade is called subgenus, uh, subgenus autoverdia. It's divided into two sections. Um, the distribution of it is centered in the California Forest Province, but it does extend into the deserts and in north into Washington, eastern, eastern Utah, at least one species does. But mostly to the California, California Forest Province, or California. And it's an extremely important clade in uh, chaparral communities, and especially in Southern California. Even though it's a small clade, it's got quite a bit of diversity in terms of um, flower, flower structure, color, and habit. So it can range from annuals, as in South Salvia Calabari, to um, herbaceous perennials, like the shrubs. And there's also a lot of difference in flower color, as you can see on the uh, slides, and, um, and shape and size. So quite a bit of diversity for a small clade. Another one of these clades I've been looking at um, that's fairly widespread is Lepicinia. Lepicinia goes from southern South America down to northern, up into northern California. Um, it has five species, five species that are endemic to the California floristic province, and they form a nice, uh, a nice clade, pretty distinct clade. Lepicinia is pretty similar to salvia in terms of uh, gross morphology, but if you look at it closely, salvia has got two stamens as opposed to the four stamens in Lepicinia. Um, Lepicinia's calyx is extremely, or more actinomorphic than, uh, more or less actinomorphic. The salvia calyx is pretty strongly bilateral. And seeds within salvia are mucilaginous, which means they're wet. They get wet. They're sticky when they get wet, whereas lepicinia seeds are not. There's also quite a bit of diversity within lepicinia in terms of um, in terms of floral form, leaf form, sexual systems, and uh, and breeding systems. Uh, it's a small clade again, not 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 very big, 44 species, but the leaf leaf size and the flower size vary by an order of magnitude over the genus. So quite a bit of variation again, a fairly small clade. Also, the uh, pollinators vary a lot. There are some that are bee pollinated, fly pollinated, others hummingbird pollinated. Um, there's Dicey, hermaphroditism, and Ganodacy present. So a lot of diversity in a fairly small group. Then Lepicinia, within California, there's a, a clade of five species. Lepicinia calicina is the most widespread. And we're just at about the northern range of uh, northern limits of the range of Lepicinia calicina. I think the northernmost collection is up in Deer Creek, just north of here, um, a little bit north of Cohasset. And it's pretty, it's the most widespread. It goes down to about in Ojai, Southern California. And the other four species within the California forest province uh, were found pretty narrowly in Southern California and Northern Baja California. Okay, so looking at a tree of these uh, packs up, Salvia is up here in blue, Lepicinia is in green, Monardella, Campanet, and Pagogeny are in red. We can see that sister to these three groups are, uh, at least in Salvia and Lepicinia, are Mexican clays. That satisfies one portion of, uh, of the Raven and Axelrod hypothesis of a Mimbarian origin. The situation is a little bit less clear down here with uh, Monardella, Campanet, and Pagogeny. There is a Mexican clay that's sister, but it's sister to this uh, California Floristic Province clay and some others. Um, so it's unclear exactly what's going on there. But the resolution in that portion of the tree is rather poor, so it still, still needs to be some work done there. Also, the uh, sound lineages of these three clades um, go back to the Miocene, which satisfies another aspect of the Raven and Axelrod hypothesis. 
Much of the cladogenesis that occurred, that's occurred within these groups, though, has occurred in the Pleistocene. So here in Salvia, pretty obviously above Chinia, and less, less obvious in Monardella, Campamintha, Pagogeny clade, but that's largely because there's not a lot of species representation in that clade. We had full, um, full sampling within that group. There would be a lot, um, I think there would be a more obvious pattern there. Okay, so looking at Lepkini again from a nuclear DNA standpoint, those other trees were chloroplast DNA. You see the same pattern. There's a Mexican sister to the California Chlorosic province lineage, a stem lineage going back into the Miocene, and a lot of diversification happening within the Pleistocene. And again, looking at salvia from a nuclear ribosomal DNA perspective, um, this is a biogeobarous ancestral reconstruction, area reconstruction. This, again, the stem lineage goes back to um, the mid Miocene. It looks like it has, um, through the ancestral area reconstruction, it has uh, more or less a Madrain affinity um, or a desert affinity. And again, a lot of the diversification has happened, a lot of intra, uh, intra subgenera uh, diversification has gone on in, in the past uh, about two million years. So, some answers to the, these questions of the mints. Um, the California floristic province mint lineages, at least uh, the ones we looked at, do have a membrane origin. Um, they seem to uh, um, more or less originate these, these lineages in the Miocene, but a lot of the species radiations that we find have occurred in the Pleistocene. So moving uh, um, out of that and talking a little bit about some ongoing work for salvia. Um, these aren't necessarily California salvias, but, um, but California salvia is a pretty important group within California horticulturally, so I thought it would be of interest uh, talk about. Again, there's about a thousand species of salvia worldwide, and the question is, this is one of the biggest genera in the, the biggest genera of flowering plants in the world. The question arises, why is it so diverse? One of the ideas behind this is that there's a, a possible key innovation um, in the form of a stamina lever mechanism. Basically what this is, is you've gone from a four standing condition in a group like Lepchenia to a two statement condition. The two stamens, uh, the theca of the anthers, the stamens, have actually physically separated. And um, in many of the salvia taxa, they've actually formed uh, a lever mechanism um, via this connective that expands out of the theca. So one theca becomes infertile and actually becomes a, a pressure point for an insect or a bird to hit. So up top. Up top is the fertile theca, that would be the infertile theca, that's basically a piece of tissue. And an insect will come in and basically hit this piece of tissue and hit it, the top theca, down onto the insect or bird's head and um, dust the pollinator, and that's believed to have promoted outcrossing. It's a pretty ingenious um, feature. This is known in only one other very small clade of uh, plants um, from Australia, but um, it's diversified in a bunch of different ways within salvia. And so there's not just one flavor of the stamina letter mechanism. It's actually gone into a bunch of different ways. It's, it's uh, diversified in a bunch of different ways in different parts of the world. And it's very possibly um, a driver of this, uh, this amazing series of diversifications within Salvia. And so what we're doing to try to quantify this, this was um, this is Ricardo Freebold in the foreground and me in the background. This is at UC Berkeley. Um, Last summer, we actually took a flatbed scanner and um, we're pulling, went to the garden, we grabbed salvia, pulled the salvia plants apart, and scanned the various floral features of salvia. So the leaves, the flowers, the uh, stamens, the, uh, the style. One of the things we did, we, we made some plates, and these are just more or less um, descriptive. Uh, you can see the side view of the pearl uh, front view and the stamens that have been taken out there. They've all got scale bars on them. We put a ruler in with each of these scans. These are some bee pollinated flowers, or you know, salvia flowers, some hummingbird pollinated salvia flowers. And again, um, it's basically the same thing. It's just one flavor of what we're doing. And the idea is that we're going to take all this, this data, the corolla data, the leaf data, the staminal data, and 
this is why I use my own computer because it's bigger than each other. <laughs> use a workflow to um, to basically uh, map these different characters onto onto a phylogeny. These different types of characters. So we'll actually be able to trace the evolution of this staminal lever mechanism over over a phylogeny, uh, kind of piece by piece, which uh, in an image in an imagistic kind of way. So it's really kind of, really pretty cool. We've done some uh, preliminary things with this where we've looked at uh, floral uh, shape over phylogenies. And we've also looked at how pollinators have, or have uh, evolved over these big phylogenies. But this is something that we're pretty excited about in terms of uh, future salvia research. All right, with that, I'll take questions, and uh, thanks for everybody for coming.